You've heard this gospel many times. So we must ask ourselves individually, does this find root in my life? Do I, do I hear it and understand it and make it part of my life? And, and then, you know, it affects everybody else around us because that word is so deeply rooted in who we are that it is demonstrated in all the, the things, the acts that we do. You know, it, people are always going to be at different places in the church, you know. You're, you're either on your way out or you're on your way in. You, your disposition that day that you come is going to affect what you feel, what you see, what you hear, what you do. And that is not a, you know, a, a, a judgment of condemnation. It's just the reality of it. It's where we are, you know, this day in, in hearing, you know, God telling us that what kind of, what kind of soul are we? Are we receptive <coughs> to God's word and and the things that it means? Or are we just, you know, God's throwing the good seed out and we got a <coughs> cardboard placard out there saying, my life matters and none of the rest of you do. And the seed falls upon the pavement is gathered up by ravens, by birds of prey. You know, are we are we ones that, you know, we, we, we have a moment in our life when we really need God. We really, really need God. And we cry out to God. And and He's there for us. And then after the tribulation is over we turn back to our own ways and ways of doing things because there's no depth to it because we're superficial people but we don't have to be you know are we people that have weeds in our life and, and, and I don't think anyone is without certain weeds. At least I can't speak of another experience because I gotta keep weeding my heart all the time. Lest it fall into some ways of thinking, believing, or doing that are not consistent with being a disciple of Jesus Christ. I mean, do we, do we let our affairs and all the rest of the stuff that we do capture us in such a way that we don't let this gift that we've been given really get all the get all the nourishment and water it deserves. I mean, do we do we you know what kind of music do we listen to? What kind of uh, of words do we do we read? I mean, what kind, what are the television programming that we watch? What are the kind of people that we have around us? Does any of that build us up? Or is it stuff that might tear us down? And it's a tough road to weed some of that stuff out of our life. Because we're used to it. We're used to having weeds around. And, you know, it's hard work because you're on your hands and knees and and you got to pull the weeds out of your life. It's just not an easy thing. But when the day of the Lord comes, and he visits himself upon us, are, are we in a place to receive that word and to act upon that word?
I had a spiritual dream this week. I know people like will go, he always talks about himself. Look, I don't have anybody else's faith experience. I only have my own. And I, and maybe you connect to it or you don't. But but I had this dream. And in the dream, I don't know the the symbolism of it. I've I've been calling people around the country. Tell me what this symbolism means. But I was waiting for church to start. And it was between a building, I don't know what it was, and there was an outdoor altar and and benches. And then there was another building I knew to be a church. And I was sitting there. I don't know what I had on. I'm, I think I had my clerics on. But there was this guy with me that I knew was a priest, but he didn't have clerics on. And he started this conversation about what he thought was really good in the church. And I was like, have you read anything that this guy's produced? I mean, are you serious? This is no John Paul II. And he, when I went on to say, he was like, well, I'm about as left as you can get. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm the other side of the equation. Like, I'm about as right, even if I'm wrong. And this priest came out. Why he vested in front of this altar, I don't know. But he had two acolytes with him. And he, they put this red vestment on it that you know has the cross. And then it had this big, he was a big, tall guy with dark hair. And he had this big, round thing that said IHS, right? Iesus Hominum Salvatore. It, it, like, I am his what it really means, right? Jesus, the Savior of man. And I said to this guy, I said, isn't that beautiful? And he goes, it really is. And I felt like he was going through an interior conversion. The mass went on, priest went in, mass went on, and then at some point, I got up and I went around the back of this building to my right. And there was a little alcove, maybe 10 by 10, 8 by 8. And that priest came to me and he had a sensor, the, the incense sensor. And he blessed me with it. And I have no idea what that meant. Then he put his hand out. And I took his hand to kiss his ring that was had a red jewel in it and, and, it, and it was surrounded with gold. And I assume he was a bishop. And I kissed his ring, the symbol of authority, and then I took his hands and I placed his hands upon my head. And I felt the power of God come into me. And I knew that what I was praying for for weeks was being answered. I then took his hands and I kissed his palms and the back of his hands. And there's a symbolism there. I, I don't know, but perhaps it's because one is about humanity and the other one is about Jesus Christ. And, and that you live out your life as a priest at once, you know, holy unto God and at the same time flawed and weak and human at the same time. He went away and God told me I was supposed to tell someone to prepare themselves. And I thought his name was Jim, a priest. So the priest came out after the service and I kept calling out, Jim, Father Jim, Jim. And no one answered. And there in front of me was my friend, Father Tim. I preached his first Mass. It 
Did God ever give you a friend you would never expect? You know, somebody you, who didn't really share your common things that you like, but given to you. And so, Father, Tim is given to me. And he's one of those guys, like, you have them, I hope, please, that, you know, a person you haven't talked to for a while, and yet you call him, and it's been six months or a year or whatever, and it's just like you talked to him yesterday. That's Father Tim. So I had to wait till at least it was 7 o'clock my time because it was going to be 6 o'clock in mountain time. And I sent him a text, are you awake? And he called me. And I told him that God's telling me that to tell you to prepare yourself. And he goes, well, you're the second person this week. The first one came in tears, and I said, I'm crying. And that you will know what that means, or it will be revealed to you. So I started that day getting up, and there was a song on my lips that I've never heard before. But I wrote it down, lest I forget it. And Ted will help me put the music to it. Very simple, like the song we sang to begin math, right? Simply, oh my soul, I will praise the Lord. Because that's what my soul desires to do. And I will not accept anyone to tell me that I cannot proclaim the Word of God under any circumstance. And if you want, kill me. But I ain't going to stop. Because that's what I'm created to do. That's who I am. I, if, if I am not a priest and delivering the sacraments to you, I have nothing. But with you I am everything. Everything that is good about me is because of you. I don't have anything, any gift or talent that is about serving myself. It's about serving you. It's about God and serving you. So I told a few people, And that night, it, I was already in bed because it's exhausting for me to have God come on me in that kind of power. And my friend said, I've been thinking about this all day. I'll, I'll pay for it. Will you please come? And Monday morning, I'm leaving. I'll be back next Sunday. On Monday I'm leaving. And I'm going to my friend. And I'm going to pray with him. Because who knows what God is calling him to. But it must be something special. And if he wants me to support him, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And if somebody needs me in the hospital... I'm going to the hospital because I ain't afraid of a lie. This stuff is all a lie. To get us to not love one another and be with each other. You know, and I can't follow somebody that says, you know, okay, we're going to close all the churches. Isn't that exactly what the devil wants? I mean, let's... Let's go and make... Everybody believed that a priest is just a pedophile. That everyone that you see is nothing but a sexual junkie. And then, if that isn't good enough, we're going to discredit them in front of the entire world. 
And then we're going to bankrupt the church over it. And, you know, that's not even enough. Let's lock the doggone doors. Isn't that exactly what be, would be the greatest plan that the devil could ever design? Get out your bolt cutters. Take the chains off the door. Don't kneel before our Lord and Savior and ask Him to save our world. Because it's only prayer that's going to fight this evil. The kind of evil that says you have to pray and fast. Because these demons don't go easy. These demons want to tear down everything that is true and good and beautiful. They don't want you to have a family. They don't want you to visit your friends. Loneliness, as I heard in the news this morning, is more devastating than cancer. Let's separate us from each and every one that we love so that we can't love them and we leave them alone. If you need to go to the nursing home and kick down the door, my mom is gone. My dad is gone. But if you would tell me on this date that I couldn't come in your place, God help you. So, I'm going on a spiritual journey this week and I ask you to pray for me. I'm going to visit some very special people along the way. And I'm going to encourage them to be the best they can be. Because they already are. But they're going to make a difference. And if God's going to call me to something more, then He will let me know. But this is about as vocal as I've been yet. Don't buy the lie of the enemy. You have nothing to be afraid of. You have everything that you need if you want to receive it. You've gone out of your way this morning to come and worship God. You are demonstrating in your person, I will love God and Him above all else. I will keep the Sabbath day. And I hope you never use His name in vain. And you give honor to your mother and father who taught you to come to Mass. Praise God on Sunday, because that's what it's there for. So you will not kill innocent life, but protect it from those who would want to unjustly take it from you. Don't steal. Don't lie. You know, be, be in fidelity to your spouse. Don't think that your joy is going to come from anybody else's spouse or anybody else's pro property. We're all going to hang on the cross a little bit. Because that's our lot. But you know what? It isn't every day. Today is a day of beauty and sunshine and blue skies and little puffy clouds. And if you're having trouble seeing me, it's because my grapevines are growing right in front of the camera. And there's a bunch of low-hanging fruit. And we're going to make that into altar one. Because the symbolism is important. You know that... Anything I have is a gift from God. Anything that I have is a gift from God. And I need to live as a witness of that truth. That I don't stand here except for every ligament and sinew that is the body of Christ. I, I don't stand here without him just making a leg for me. Right? I, don't, I don't stand here without this cross 
with the bones of St. Patrick, the bones of St. Thomas, and my father was named Thomas, my mother was Patrick, P Patricia, and, the, and two slivers from the cross of Christ. And I was in my mom's womb when they gave it to me. Little did I know that I would have to trade my life for it. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So just be as sacrificial in your love of everybody that you have around you as God calls me to. Like Tim said, you know, you can't talk about this to the to just anybody. I'm like, I, I understand. Those, so the greatest suffering that a priest goes through, if he has God in his heart, is not to be allowed to be a priest. It's so important for me. Then shoot me dead first, because you ain't gonna stop me. Only reason I exist is for you. To proclaim God's unfailing goodness. Then he loves you. He wants you to be happy. He's given you so many gifts that we just like almost ignore. But that he wants the best for you. The very best. And that needs to be heard on those days when we don't really feel like that. It's still true. You know, I got an 11 and a half year old laugh, right? Who waits all week long for you to show up. And her tail is so sore by the end of the night, I have to give her some, you know, ibuprofen for dogs, right? Because you're, you're what makes her week happen, what makes it good and real and purposeful. And how much more for each one of us. May the Lord bless your week this week. May he give you spiritual dreams and things that you understand. May he place a song upon your lips and his faith in your heart. And that every day might be one that gives glory to God. Because he's the only thing that makes it happen. And all glory be to God this day and every day. Jesus, teach us how to worship with our whole being. Holy Spirit, inspire us to live lives of faithfulness and goodness that we might be examples to our family and friends, to our workmates and to everyone who sees us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise be Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, you know, our faith is not something we discovered in the forest by tripping over an old log. 